Hi everybody, Ken from Miniature War Gaming Warriors and today I'm going to be painting up some 1815 French in great coats. I'm going to loosely be basing these around the 96th line infantry. I've got the flag for them so this is one of the commands. Really looking forward to getting this done because that means the battalion's done as well. That'll be I think my second or third battalion for the French done completely. But without further ado we'll get into paint how I paint this and I'll do a step by step process. So step one going to be doing the great coat itself and for this I'm going to be using khaki from Vallejo uh, really really nice I have primed the miniature already and for that I've used grey sear so I'm going to make sure to get this all around the great coat and I'll see you at the next stage okay so now that the khaki is done with the great coat just a quick tip, you might want to check your reference material. So I checked mine and my gaiters down the bottom here uh, were the same colour as my great coat, so they were khaki. But with some of my line infantry for this same battalion, they're actually a different colour, so they're like a grey. So it might be worth you just checking your reference material just to double check all your colours. So now I'm going to be moving on to the black, so I'm going to be doing the shaker in that colour. I'm also going to be doing the boots themselves down the bottom here, trying to be careful not to get it onto the khaki. And also around the back here where like the ammunition is kept in this pouch here, I'm going to be doing that in black as well. So black Templar, make sure to give it a good shake, but straight on there. Nice coverage. You could just use a normal matte black, but I'm using the black Templar because I think it dries really nicely. So once I've done all these parts, we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so now the backpack's done, I'm going to go on to Fur Brown, which is going to be all over his backpack. And then if you have any bayonet scabbards uh, on your model, then this is what I would be painting them in as well. You can see all this on the reference uh, page that I've linked in the comment section and also in the video show notes. Okay. Now that the fur brown's done, I'm going to be moving on to the flesh tones. This is going to really start making the miniature pop out and look more like an actual person. So make sure you get the hands and also the face. And don't forget, if you can and it's modelled, the ears just there as well if you haven't got one with uh, the great coat. Right now, now the flesh is done, you can see definitely makes the model come to life a bit more doesn't it so happy with that so for this next part I'm switching brushes out because I use different brushes for different jobs so contrast paints and uh, metallics I've got a separate brush which is this white one here a bit of an old battered up one but for my normal layering techniques and bits and bobs like that I use a separate brush because I don't want all the metallic parts to dry inside this brush and ruin the ruin the tip um, I don't mind if it does it so much because I haven't got to be so neat with this one. So, as you can see on the side here, it's like a canteen sort of thing. I couldn't find any sort of reference material on my on my uh, page for this. So, what I've done is I've just gone with like a green for the rest of the battalion. So, I'm just going to match that as well. And this is Minotaurum green from uh, the Citadel Contrast range. So, I'm just going to paint this in. And then, once that's done, I shall move on to the next part. Right now that green's done, the next part I'm going to be moving on to is actually the rifle itself. So I'm going to be painting the wood in here and I'm going to be using flat brown from Vallejo. So just making sure to get the stock. Obviously you want to try and get both sides of the rifle, uh, the wood on both sides there and also underneath. Don't forget the underneath part because I do that sometimes. I paint both sides and then realise I've missed some under the under the back there. Um, so once that bit's done we'll be moving on to the next part. If you've noticed, I've left all the white off and that's going to be probably one of the very last things we do and there's a reason for that which I will explain a bit later. Okay, now that that's done, what I'm going to be doing is I'm moving on to like the metallic parts of the, the figure. So, first colour is going to be gunmetal and that's from the Army Painter and I'm going to paint all of the uh, metal on the musket. And also this model's uh, depicted with like a pan on the back there. So I'm going to paint that in the metallic as well. 
There's no more metallic on, on this model uh, for that color. There's gold, but we'll be doing that after. So once I've done all that, I will see you again in a sec. Right, okay, now that part is done. I'm gonna be moving on to the next metallic, which is gold. So, because this guy's forming part of my Eagle Guard, what I'm gonna do is epaulets on the side here, they're gonna be gold. For Voltigers, for these, you would use like a green or a green yellow. Uh, and for Grenadiers, you would use a red. So, make sure you check your reference, because each battalion was different. But for these guys, the Eagle Guard have got like a gold round here and also for the standard so uh, and we've got gold here as well so for this I'm going to be using Retributor Armour Gold from uh, Citadel reason I'm using this is because I, I, I think it's a really nice gold and when you put a wash over it it comes out really nice so making sure to get two epaulets also on the Shirko, hit Shirko here um, Make sure to get the braiding gold as well. And also, I tend to, at this point, start like putting gold on the buttons if they've got gold buttons as well. And just on the uh, musket here, there's normally like the working parts. I normally put a hint of gold on that as well. But each to their own, I'm just going by my reference art. So be sure to check your reference art to see what colour these are. Right, okay, just a couple more steps now until we move on to the white itself. So it's kind of like a wash, but it's kind of not. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the dark oak flesh from the contrast range, basically to just go over all the flesh and uh, just to darken it right down. And then pre like white stage, I'm going to probably highlight it, just spend a bit more time on the flesh tones just to make them pop a little bit. So once I've done all this, we shall move on to one of the final stages and then it'll be the white. Okay, one of the final steps now, if you've got any plumes or anything like that, on mine, they're like a, a yellow, so I'm going to just paint that in now, and also like at the cap badge underneath, whatever colour you've got that as, so again, for my battalion command, they are red, so I'll paint that in red as well, and then the final stage, you're going to be a bit, a bit of your choice now, so certain models have got hair, so this guy's got hair on there, so I'm going to go in with some of the contrast colours. Good colours for hair for the contrast. Skeleton Horde, nice like blondy sort of hair. You've got Agarash Dunes, it's quite a dark blonde. Then you've got obviously all the browns, so you've got Wildwood. Uh, you've got Gorgon Fur, if you want to go with that, it's like a gingery sort of colour. And um, yeah, just take your pick, go around, doing your, doing your hair colours. And then once that's all done, we're going to be moving on to the white stage, so that'll be next. Right, okay, now I'm going to be doing everybody's favourite part, which is white. <laughs> so, for the white on this mini, I'm basically going to go in all the trousers, the cross belts, also the straps on the back, just there, and uh, make sure I pick out any straps that are on the back as well. So, I'm going to give that a go now, and uh, I'm going to be using two thin coats of white, just so it... Uh, comes out nicely you don't want to be going thick with this stuff and then once this is done we shall be applying some washes so I'll see you in a minute right okay so that's with the white show you the whole miniature and to be fair that is rather nice itself and um, what we're gonna do now is literally one of the final stages is we are going to stick a wash on but this is a very watered down wash so I've got known oil from Games Workshop and I've used some of their technical contrast their uh, medium to uh, water it down 50 50 or even even 60 40 with the contrast medium and we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna go very lightly over the whole miniature including the white we're gonna go in there And once this is all dry, we'll just go in and highlight the flesh tone. Maybe 
just have a quick look at the white make sure that's not darkened down too much but then yeah once it's all dry uh, the miniature is complete so I'll see you at the next stage right it's looking swaz right now very last thing I'm gonna do uh, you don't need to do this stage but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna just do a little bit of highlighting on the miniature so for the skin and the flesh tone so you make sure you try and get the bridge of the nose you know, you get around the cheeks you get on the fingers there you do individual fingers and uh, yeah once this is done the mini is going to be complete I'll get it I'll get it all based up um, with the battalion the whole battalion and uh, yeah I'll show you so there's the completed battalion if you're interested this is the 96th line of the French based in 1815 so very very happy with how it's turned out miniature looks great like I say, 24 of these or 36 if you're doing 36 man battalions. It's absolutely fantastic. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll be sure to see you again soon. And I'll let this play out now with a bit of background music so you can just enjoy the finished product. Bye-bye for now.